Join me as we explore a section of the Rhine which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge of Tips for Travellers. 67 kilometres between Rudersheim and Koblenz, full of castles, quaint villages, history and beautiful scenery. And it's the UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's known as the Upper Middle Rhine Valley. So what are the things that you should absolutely do? Now the first thing I recommend you do is actually get onto the water and get a sense of the lay of the land. So there's a series of great boat trips which take about two hours that run between Rudersheim and end in a place called St. Gore and St. Gorenson. You drift along the river and you pass up to 18 castles and fortresses. There is multilingual commentary. So there's English, there's French, there's Spanish, Italian, Japanese. They explain to you the different castles you've seen, the different fortresses, some of the history, the struggles and battles over the centuries that happened along the stretch of the Rhine. The boat actually stops at a number of these very beautiful quaint towns where passengers can either embark or disembark. It gives you a real sense of just how concentrated and significant the stretch of the Rhine is and it helps better understand why it became a UNESCO site. It's quite magnificent because in addition to incredible scenery you just see castle after castle after castle. You get to see river cruise boats, you get to see cargo boats and you get a real appreciation for just how important the Rhine is also from a commercial perspective. Now the reason that many people actually do this trip is to see the Lorelei, a big craggy rock. It's over 130 meters high and it's at a very significant part of the Rhine because it's where the Rhine is at its narrowest and its deepest. So it used to be a very treacherous part of the river and there's a fable and story, in fact a song, all about the siren that would be right on top of this rock. She had beautiful golden hair and she would sing and distract sailors and they would eventually ruin and wreck their boats on the rocks below. Once you get to St. Gorenson, what I recommend is actually head back to Rudersheim on the train. It's only about a five minute walk from where the boat leaves you and it only takes half an hour on the train back to Rudersheim. The next thing I recommend you do is head up on the cable car to an incredible memorial, the Niederwalden Kamal or the Niederwald Memorial. As you head up you get magnificent views of the Rhine Valley. Once you actually get up to the top there is beautifully maintained gardens the memorial itself is phenomenal. It was actually built to commemorate the unification of Germany in 1871. Now on top of this stone structure is a magnificent, a very dramatic 10 and a half meter statue of the female figure called Germania. Underneath the memorial is a great viewing platform, beautiful views. You can then spend time strolling around the park before you get back on that cable car head back down into Rudersheim. Now once you're back down in Rudersheim there's a very important place to go and this is called the Drosselgasse. It's listed as one of the 100 top 100 things you should see. It's a very narrow street. It's only 144 meters long. It's packed full of craft shops, wine shops because the region's obviously very well known for wine, restaurants, there's really interesting buildings. Drosselgasse is a really popular place to go. It's also a great place to go if you want to get some really traditional German food or wine or beer. It just really is a magnificent place to go. From there I would recommend that you then head to your next stop which is Obervessel. Now Obervessel roughly sort of in the midpoint along the stretch of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. It built two and a half kilometers of walls around it and the walls were anything between 6 to 16 meters high. They are the best preserved fortresses and walls of its kind within Germany. It had 22 towers and 16 of them have survived. Many of those 16 remaining towers you can actually climb up the towers and from the top you get great views. So a vessel for me was a really significant place because of those walls. It's a great place to sort of be based at to explore other parts. I would then head off towards Koblenz and go and see a couple of castles that you will not have seen on the boat tour. The first of them is near St. Gore and it's called the Rheinfels Castle. Now the reason I chose this castle is it is the largest fortifications of its kind on the Rhine. Now big parts of it are actually ruins. It's a very dramatic place with beautiful big thick walls. There's also a great museum within the actual old part of Rheinfels Castle. On one of the old turrets you can look down across St. Gore, the Lorelei and St. Gorison. So again magnificent views from this really really important and really significant castle. The second castle I recommend is a castle called Stolzenfels Castle which is quite near Koblenz 
The reason I chose this castle is because, unlike many of the other castles on the Rhine, this is very Gothic in nature and is quite a modern castle relative to the other castles. King Frederick Wilhelm IV of Prussia commissioned the current castle as a summer residence and was built in the 19th century between 1836 and 1842. Beautiful gardens and certainly as you continue on your journey towards Koblenz, these are two great castles along the way to stop at. The last stop and the end of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is the city of Koblenz. And there's two really important things to see here. The first of these is reached by this very beautiful and modern cable car, the fortress of Ehrenbreitstein. So the fortress stands 118 meters above the Rhine. The fortress itself is humongous. It was built to ensure that no one could ever take this fortress. There's big thick walls which are designed to take a big battering and inside there is walls within walls, sections within sections. And one of the big highlights is to this plaza area where there's a viewing platform and you get to look down where the Mosel River meets the Rhine River. So that view is absolutely magnificent. Now if you don't want to pay to go into the fortress but you still want to get the view. In 2011 this viewing platform was built. The view is not as good by any stretch I don't think as the one from the fortress but this is another option. Next thing to see, head back down on the cable car and a short walk away is the Deutsches Eck or German Corner. It's 37 meters high and the top 40 meters of it is a statue of the first emperor of Germany, Kaiser Wilhelm I. During World War II the statue on the top was actually destroyed and just the plinth part was left. So the statue at the top was only replaced in the 1990s after Germany reunited. This is a remarkable 67 kilometer stretch of the Rhine. If you go on a Rhine cruise you pass through this area, you get a glimpse of it, you get a feel from it. But hopefully as you've seen you're getting onto land and really exploring this place there is so much to see. Now clearly you could spend ages visiting. If you enjoyed the video I'd love it if you liked the video and what would be even more fantastic subscribe to Tips for Travellers and you'll get much more travel inspiration, advice and tips. Mm -hmm.